All right. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, today is an interesting one in the sense that I did not make any trades today. So it's kind of rare for me, to be honest. And um, this is kind of just from, for one, the market being kind of slow, but other stuff I was dealing with today. So anyways, um, not much of a recap here today. So I do want to go over something that is uh, still an issue I've been having. I've been telling you guys about with E-Trade, and that is my position with ACY. Um, I placed a trade on ACY on Monday, and uh, there were some real issues with um, pending status on those orders. And uh, I wanted to break that down for you guys today real quick and show you kind of my result of that. I've been contacting E-Trade pretty much every single day and they've been working on it. So they've put someone on it. And um, anyways, I just heard back today from them. So I'll show you guys what they said, but uh, here is the gist of the story. Let's, let's go into ACY first off and let me go into the yearly. Actually, I'll change it up here. So anyways, um, yeah, Monday I made a purchase uh, order for the stock and I got in right at, uh, what was it? Um, let's see. Yeah, it was, uh, okay, that was Monday. I mean, I'm just referencing my stuff real quick. Four or five, I want to make sure that's right. Yeah. Anyways, that was Monday, four or five. I hopped in and um, got 300 shares at 1687. And here was the deal on this, is that I put my orders through and I was dealing with this a little bit earlier um, in the morning when I placed my orders that it's like as soon as I would place it, it wouldn't execute, right? So there was like this serious lag. And at first, when I was trading earlier in the day, um, it was a little slow, but orders were going through being executed, okay? And then when I got to this point, um, when I purchased more shares, I had closed out of everything, and then I was going in to, to go for another trade uh, for the move up, and got, you know, 300 shares at 1687. Now, the deal with this on, as soon as I went in to go order, um, place the order, I placed it, and nothing happened. So I'm like, okay, what's going on? Rechecked my Wi-Fi. Everything was fine with my connection. I was totally good. And um, anyways, my order finally executed, no joke, about maybe six minutes after. And I was super pissed off because obviously I was going for a quick trade in and out. And the thing from my end didn't look like it even executed until about six minutes later. And everything was just seemed totally out of whack. So I called E-Trade, put in a um, report on this, and I was confirmed that a ta the person I talked to, the rep, they mentioned that there were other people calling in in regards to the same issue that orders uh, were actually being executed. The problem was they're showing up as, they're being reported on the software as uh, pending. And so that's the big problem here is that um, E-Trade is saying that all their orders, everything that's placed is being executed, you know, immediately. However, from the customer's perspective, when you're looking at your order status here, um, it, it'll show um, that you don't even have shares and it's not even showing up in your, in your positions. That's what was happening for me. It wasn't showing that I had shares, but... Technically, in the background, like I guess through the actual um, system, those place those orders were actually executed. However, on the client side, on the actual software, it's being reported that um, they're not even executed yet. So it really screwed up trading. So anyways, I was so frustrated at this that that's why I called in on Monday, put in this issue. So they, um, I talked to someone for a while and they said they'll, put someone on it, they're gonna work on it, and then, you know, reply back in 24 hours. That didn't happen, okay? I called them on Tuesday, followed up, they said, yeah, we're still working on it. 
don't worry, we'll, you know, we'll get someone on, on it. Um, someone will be looking into this. So, you know, today rolls around and I'm, um, I didn't know what to do in the sense of, I wanted to make sure that I didn't sell out of my position in the sense that I would either be, they could reverse the trade or somehow remediate this position. I was worried that if I closed it out, then they would give the grounds that, hey, you've already closed out of this position, so we can't do anything for you at this point. So anyways, I've, I've been holding it. And um, what was it on Tuesday? I think it was Tuesday, yesterday. Uh, Tuesday had, an, had another run up yesterday and it was a quick run up and I was holding shares. So I was, I looked back at it cause I was looking at something else that I was thinking about trading and kind of got distracted. But anyways, um, I saw it curling up quickly and I thought, well, I'm holding this position and it looks like it's about to possibly go test those, that um that high again of, of 17 so i hopped in and i yesterday i got 300 more shares um yesterday at 1515 so anyways i've got 600 shares now and um once again i decided not to uh sell any of the position because i was worried that you know if I if I did close out of the position, they would rule it in some in some way, shape, or form. They would say, "Hey, you close out of the position. We can't, you know, help you out." So, anyways, I don't know if it's just out of stupidity or I'm naive in thinking that they would actually do something about it. And I followed up with them again today, so I'll show you what they um, what they sent me today. Uh, so no joke before I got this message, probably about two hours before I got this message, I was on the phone with someone telling them about the issue and they told me that they thought, well, since other people had this issue as well, and it's recorded, it's noted in their system that, Hey, this was actually a, um, system issue. And yes, the reports that were going out to customers for their order status were being delayed um that gave me that confidence of okay other people are dealing with this and then i asked is there any chance they might be able to remedy the situation and he said you know since it is system wide and um other customers are dealing with it that the chances are good that they'll be able to do something so anyways i get this you know message here and what they're just going over here is the fact that I place these orders, right? They're they're going back and looking at their logs and saying, hey, yeah, you placed order at, at this price. Um, but here's where I'm pissed off is that, so they do admit to it, okay? Right in here, this order was executed correctly. They're saying it was, you know, um, but right here they say within one second, uh, while on the bid, with a delayed report. So it, appears to me as that they're admitting to the fact that there was delayed reporting okay and they even save it again right here um because i did place another order directly behind this 300 shares for a quantity of one just to test it out going what the hell because i was frustrated i was like what the hell is going on with the system so i put in a little test order uh for one share and even that one they're showing um, with a delayed report. So I'm thinking, okay, this is looking good. They're admitting to it delaying. So what are they going to do here? You go down on the bottom here, and they say, based on this information, it has been determined that there is no adjustment due. Um, we'll back up a bit. The trade inquiry is denied for inappropriate subsequent actions. Is your responsibility to attempt to mitigate additional losses? So this is just... Complete bullshit to me. I mean, here they are admitting to um, the delayed with a delayed report, and yet they're not wanting to do anything in regards to um, you know helping people out with the loss they could have incurred, or you know doing something. I mean, 
nothing here. And so I'm, I'm obviously still pissed about this situation. Once again, it, I don't know if it's just stupidity on my part or naive in thinking that uh, they would actually help me out. And I don't know. I, I feel like E-Trade in the past used to be great, but they've been, like I've been telling you, they've been going downhill as far as, as, far as customer support. The wait times on the phone are ridiculous. Uh, it's just too much BS going on to me, and this just solidifies it. I mean, the fact that they just want to throw a message at you 48 hours after working on it and saying, oh, yeah, we're not going to do anything, even though, you know, there was delayed reporting, which is stupid, because how are you supposed to, how is anyone supposed to trade if they don't know where they're at, if, in the sense that, for me, as a trader, I didn't even know if I had shares or not. Did the order go through? Like, here I am looking at my um, software here and delayed reporting. I can't tell if I have shares. And they're saying on their end, hey, yeah, it uh, everything executed, you know, on time. So, anyways, I'm super pissed. So, I'm looking at this situation. I'm, I'm still holding here and I got 600, 601 shares. And I think my average price now is of. Uh, 1603 so here we are today and today you know had a nice another little run up and the thing moved so quickly we moved to one minute the yeah the stock is pretty insane in the sense that on the short term it's super volatile and it really run it'll run hardcore when it has a good push of volume look at this this morning we had this incredible push um, this morning, all the way up to 15. And just like that, it reverses in a split second and, um, you know, goes rip roaring all the way down fast. And, um, you know, when that move occurs, it's like up, down, then volume just fades. Volume goes into nothing and you know, the, the stock just dies off. And it has similar trends. I mean, look at, um, what was this, Tuesday, yesterday? Same thing. Market opens, all this volume comes ripping in. Thing is going crazy. Almost wants to retest that high there. Or it kind of did, of 16. And then it had a moment where it faded, and then boom, volume just goes to nothing. Completely fades. And just goes sideways all day. So, anyways, I'm looking at this chart now. And since I've been holding it for a while, and once again, guys, I don't, I don't, personally, I don't like holding stuff. And, you know, I've, I've done it too much recently. It's bad habits, and it's just not the strategy I like to follow. But anyways, this, this, this one trade in particular, because of the technical issues, I was holding it for that reason of possibly trying to get remedied for this technical issue, um, and hopefully get some resolve to it. But anyways, now I'm holding it in a sense that, well, okay, this is sort of like a swing trade in, in a sense now. And if I look at the, um, the chart here, let me pull up. Do just 10 minute for now. So anyways, 10 minute. Okay, if you look at this, it's actually held up a little bit here. Now today we did break you know, through this area, you know, we were building up a base here um, from Friday and it's kind of been going uphill, but today was kind of one where it broke some of those support areas like 1133. Um, but it looks kind of like it's kind of formed a new area of support here at around 1052, 1059. Um, so I'm kind of analyzing this thing and looking at should I just treat this as a swing trade at this point? I mean, it already is at this point. Uh, you know, I've been holding for um, just a few days here now, but um, yeah, I don't know where to go from this because um, I'm not much of a swing trader. But I don't know. There, it looks like there's some some support here, but at the same time, the top is kind of. You can tell it's it's hit its high points here, and they just keep getting lower and lower. Um, 
I don't know. That might be an opportunity for tomorrow to break past that and go higher. But at the same time, I don't, I don't know. Because I'm not reading too much into this actual company or anything. Um, or diving into too much research. And of course, I mean, it's a former runner. It's had some crazy days in the past. Look at this on, what was it? December 28th, it went absolutely nuts. Went up to uh, 37. But uh, yeah, I might, I might at some point just have to dump this thing for a loss. And um, I don't know. So I'm holding it now. I mean, I was going to wait and see how after hours, after hours had a nice little push, but there wasn't a ton of volume either. So I don't know what to think of that, but I might just hold this until tomorrow. See what happens tomorrow. Um, it'd be nice if we get a, you know, push past 15 possibly, but I don't know if that's possible. So we'll see what tomorrow unfolds. Um, I'd love to hear from you guys too, as, as well. What did you guys trade today? I, um, I had to do some other work today. I had to go to a, um, rental property and, um, do some stuff over there. So that's another reason why I didn't really trade much today, but I was up in the morning to look at the market and, Everything I was looking at, uh, BNSO, I think, was that one of them? Let's see. There were a few stocks that were up a little bit, but I felt like they weren't. Um... Now, this one, BNSO, had a really good run. But I think the problem when I was looking at this is the volume was so low right here. Look at this, like, awesome run up, and it went into halts twice. But there was no volume on this thing, so I didn't even touch it. You know, I'd love to see the momentum like this, but I've got to see way more volume than this. The volume, that's a scary thing for me. I've been in trades before where something moves up really quick, but if there's not a lot of volume behind it, sometimes they just, they'll fade. So that's again why I didn't trade this one. And uh, UTME was another one that was kind of running up and it did have a good... I had a pretty good go today, but I think it was a kind of a similar situation. I think it was kind of low volume as well. So I just didn't want to mess with it. And um, since I had to, to do some other work today and leave the house, I didn't want to you know, have to hold anything at all either. So yeah, no trades for me other than ACY. And that's what I'm still holding right now. So we'll see tomorrow if we have a turnaround this thing or... You know, could just go right back to the ground and um, open up way lower. You don't know, so uh, not feeling great about this this month, but um, or at least this week. So hopefully we can have a good turnaround here. Um, yeah, because lately I've just felt a little frustrated. Have been trading as much and just have been making the stupid moves and getting stuck in these stupid positions. And it's totally my fault. It's my bad. And, you know, I know better than that. Um, and hey, even with ACY, I have to accept, I think, at this point, that with E-Trade, E-Trade's not perfect. And there's going to be some times where I don't get filled or it's pending or whatever the case and stuff is laggy. And I just have to either A, accept that and... Uh, or look for a new brokerage. So I've been kind of thinking about moving to other brokerages. Problem is, is it seems like with a lot of the free um, commission free brokerages is that they all kind of seem to have the, some of the similar issues is that the executions on them aren't going to be perfect. And um, that's just the problem. And so um I've been looking at uh, Lightspeed. I think that's a great option for sure. And I'm tempted to, to, you know, open up account with them. But for one, I'd have to transfer all my money over there, which is one thing I want to, you know, I'm not looking forward to. And then the other thing is that their commissions, even though I've heard their execution stuff is, is really great, it's fast, very reliable, um, the commissions, especially with the strategy that I trade, I trade a ton. 
I think I would rack up so many, so much commissions. It would be insane. And it would cost me so much. Um, so I don't know if that's necessarily worth it. So I might just try to stick it with E-Trade for a little while. Um, possibly move to a TD Ameritrade. I had an account with them in the past. I still do. I just never really used it. Um, but I think that might be kind of similar to E-Trade as far as commission free. But some of the people test that it's pretty good. So, um, you know, Weeble is another one. The problem with eWeeble is I primarily use my hotkeys and I have to have the combination of, of using control and then my number pad because I have gotten very used to and accustomed to having all my orders, uh, my buy orders and um, through the number pad. And it's the craziest thing, but with Weeble, you can't um, configure your, your hotkeys that way. You can't use the number pad, which is insane to me. You can, you know, use control and then whatever else on the regular uh, keypad, but they won't allow you to use num the number pad, which is just driving me nuts, because otherwise I would definitely um, try to move over there. So, anyways, uh, I rambled on for quite a bit here. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it was valued valuable to you, and I'd love to know what you traded today. If you were green, if you were red, let me know how, by how much. And uh, let me know. I don't know if anyone's holding the bag with me here on ACY. Um, for me, it's not a great thing to be holding the bag. But hey, maybe if you you are swing trading, um, maybe you're looking at this for a new high, possibly. But um, yeah, I just uh, you know bad moves on my part, so I'm dealing with it, and we'll see what tomorrow brings. So that's it. Take care. We'll see you guys tomorrow.